and it's been a minute since I made a Falcons video. I was debating on whether I wanted to talk about this or not, but I said screw it, and here I am. So last week, Marcus Mariota was named the starting quarterback for the Atlanta Falcons. CBS Sports says, after one day of training camp, the Atlanta Falcons have settled on the team's new starting quarterback. This job will go to Marcus Mariota, the former number two overall pick who is entering his first season with the franchise. With Mariota tabbed as a starter, rookie Desmond Ritter, the 74th overall pick in the year's draft, will serve as Atlanta's backup quarterback. Obviously, we've got a plan for each of them. Marcus is the starter, said Falcons quarterbacks coach Charles London. We the athletic that's how we're going into this thing after two years as Derek Carr's backup in Las Vegas Mariota was signed by the Falcons shortly after the team's traded longtime starter Matt Ryan to the Indianapolis Colts the move reunites Mariota with Falcons coach Arthur Smith who previously worked with Mariota during the time with the Titans shortly after joining the Falcons Mariota said the chance to work against with Smith was a big fat against with Smith was a big factor in his decision to sign with Atlanta. Mariota said the chance to work against with Smith. Am I dumb or is that a typo? Or an illiterate mistake? Loyalty is very important to me, Mariota told Rob DeMello of KHON2 News. It is something that we all live off of here in Hawaii. Art has been somebody that's been in my corner for a long time. I appreciate everything he's done for me. I'm excited for this opportunity. I'm excited to be part of this organization and looking forward to just getting out there. The 28-year-old quarterback was an immediate starter for the Titans who made him the second overall pick in the 2015 NFL Draft. His career started off well enough as he threw four touchdowns in his first regular season game, a blowout win over the Buccaneers. Despite injuries enduring 38 sacks, in 12 games and a 3-9 record as a starter, Mariota's rookie season was largely a success as he threw 19 touchdowns along with two touchdown runs against 10 interceptions. Mariota's growth before his rookie and second season was apparent. In 15 games, he threw 26 touchdowns against 9 interceptions. While taking 15 fewer sacks than he did as a rookie, he also posted an 8-7 record as the Titans starting quarterback. I hate those quarterback records. He was 8-7 as the starting quarterback for the Titans. That stat doesn't really mean anything to me and it's stupid and it should not exist at all. Things started to take a turn after that. Mariota won his first playoff game in 2017, but he also threw more interceptions that season than touchdown passes. He had another up and down season in 2018 and was replaced by Ryan Tannehill six games into the 2019 season. Mariota signed that offseason with the Raiders while accepting a backup position behind Carr, throwing just 30 touchdowns in two seasons in Las Vegas. He played exceptionally well in relief of an injured Carr during a three-point loss to the Chargers late in the 2020 campaign. It was a great reset Mariota said off his time in Las Vegas. Obviously being out there on the field getting out there and playing is what I want to do but I kind of needed that in my career. Unfortunately with everything that happened in Tennessee I was a little bit beat up both mentally and physically. To get that reset to get to be a part of that great quarterback room in Vegas really has kind of propelled me for this moment. I'm excited I'm prepared I feel great and I'm looking forward to getting out there in Atlanta. Mariota was the second former number two overall pick to sign with a new team during the offseason. Mitchell Trubisky who earned a Pro Bowl Nod as a member of the Bears is hoping to revive his career in Pittsburgh. After spending the 2021 season as Josh Allen's backup in Buffalo, Mariota is hoping to make the most of his new opportunity in Atlanta where the Falcons are coming off a 7-10 campaign during Smith's first season as coach. They're going to get 110%. Everything I do, I try to do to the best of my abilities, Mariota said. I'm very honored and privileged to have this opportunity. I'm going to do whatever it takes to help my teammates be the best that they can be. And we're just fighting to get wins. And in. So was it surprising? Not really. As soon as they signed Marcus, I was like, they're going to make him the starter. I was surprised at how fast they announced him being the starter the first day after training camp. I didn't expect that. Uh, maybe after the first two games of the preseason. It makes sense. He's a veteran. He's been in the league for seven years now, about to enter his eighth season. Atlanta is trying to win games. They're trying to be competitive. Marcus Marietta, he is the veteran. He's been in high level situations. He's competed in the playoffs before. So he has that experience. So it makes sense. Go with him. As far as trying to put in a rookie like Desmond Ritter, Desmond Ritter may not get a snap in the regular season. If he does, it'll probably be if the season just completely goes completely south for Atlanta. Although me personally, I wouldn't want him to get a single snap at all. Have him learn undergrad like Marcus learn from a guy like Arthur Smith and just try to get him ready and then hopefully when the day comes for when it is time for him to to step on the field he'll produce at a high level and maybe feel a little bit more comfortable rather than just throwing him in there right now does the offense improve with Marcus Mariota as a starter I don't think so my problem with Marcus when he was in Tennessee was that he didn't do a good job of trying to push the ball down the field enough 
I thought he was a bit too afraid to take chances. And when he did, it didn't turn out too well. And he didn't do a very good job of taking care of the football. Now, according to him, he was burnt out physically and mentally. So that might have played a factor in it. I don't know. I don't know what goes on in Marcus Mariota's head and what goes behind the scenes of a football franchise. I don't act like I know what's going on with these players and what's going on behind the scenes like most people do. I just talk about what I see on the field. Now, to be fair, because football's a team sport, he may not get a fair chance to showcase his skill set, assuming he has improved, because there's still so many questions with this team particularly the offensive line. It has looked putrid for years now. If the offensive line isn't good, then he won't be good. He'll struggle. And then, of course, how will this receiving core pan out? Like Drake London, Kyle Pitts. Will Kyle Pitts take the next step? Will Drake London be able to have a breakout rookie season? Will Brian Edwards be able to carry over from what he did in Las Vegas to Atlanta when he got his opportunities? And what will the game plan be like? I think Arthur Smith will try and dominate the line of scrimmage by running the football first and establish a running game and then try to open things up with the pass so we'll see we'll see and also these fans these fans who continue to who continue to jizz themselves over marcus mariota the fact that he can run oh he's so mobile so people get excited about the wrong thing reading comments on social media instagram and twitter mariota the goat mary gota i'm so sick of this goat talk it's so stupid people just love to just anoint players as the greatest of all time this guy's gonna be great this guy's gonna be great this is the greatest receiving duo of all time you know it's like can you people just stop we don't know what Mariota is going to be we don't know what this team is going to look like okay just because a guy is mobile and he can run does not mean he's going to be able to evade pressure look at Lamar Jackson teams teams literally zero blitz him and he struggles and he gets sacked he's mobile you can make a case that he's probably even more athletic than Marcus Mariota is but you see some highlights on Instagram and Twitter Marcus Mariota running full speed down the field and people go oh yes that's my number one QB oh he's so mobile oh god yeah just fucking climaxing in their pants shut up relax and let's see what happens now he may have a good season he may have one of those years where um certain players or certain teams catch lightning in the bottle and, and they look like mvp candidates would it be a guarantee that he'll do it again and again and again i don't know i hope so I wouldn't mind it. I wouldn't mind being wrong on Marcus Mariota. I don't mind being wrong about this team. Or whenever I doubt this team, I always want to be proven wrong. So I wouldn't mind being wrong on Marcus Mariota. I wouldn't mind being wrong on the Falcons in general. I think it's going to be a horrible season. I think it's going to be a brutal season. But I would love for them to prove me wrong. So we'll see. All right, enough of me ranting. Let's talk about Marlon Davidson. I meant to talk about him in one of my earlier videos. Uh, the first time I saw this dude was against Georgia and Auburn. And I didn't really see like the whole game. I only saw like, the first half because I'm not really a big college football fanatic. But I was like, oh, okay, he seems pretty good. The commentators kept talking about him. So he must be doing a lot of work in college. So when they drafted him... I got a little excited because it seemed like he was a big name in the collegiate world and I thought that he would immediately have like a big impact. I was hoping he would have a big impact, you know, just come in and just start dominating because Atlanta needs a guy like that so bad. But for the past couple of seasons now, it's been pretty rough. It's been kind of rough. His first season in the league, unfortunately, he got COVID and then he had an ankle injury, which those can obviously set you back. Then you look at his numbers. 2020, he played eight games, had eight combined tackles, two solo tackles tackles six assist tackles 2021 he played 11 games started one game had one interception took it back for a touchdown that was against tom brady and the buccaneers one pass deflection and he also had a pass deflection in 2020 one fumble recovery one sack 21 combined tackles 12 solo tackles nine assist tackles one tackle for loss one hit on the QB. So his numbers don't really stand out. They don't really make you go, wow. I'm not going to say that he's a bust. I'm nowhere near saying that I think he's he's not going to pan out too well because it's been a rough, shaky couple of years for him. And when he has been out on the field, he just can't seem to get past the offensive lineman. He just can't seem to get off his block. I think he needs to add more moves to his repertoire. Um, I think he tries to bull rush a bit too much. And that was um, Vic Beasley's problem, trying to use power instead of finesse if he can produce like i hope he can alongside grady jarrett who i'm still surprised is still here i thought he'd be long gone by now um if he can produce then teams won't necessarily have to key in so much on grady jarrett and then um that'll open things up for the pass rush now now teams are gonna have to worry about grady and marlin and then obviously them drafting arnold ebiketti hopefully he'll be able to come into his own and then that'll just create so much pressure for the opposing quarterbacks and the opposing teams and offensive fronts 
So this team is definitely young. It's definitely a new regime. Hopefully this team, within the next few years, will be talking about them as a Super Bowl contender and as Super Bowl champions. Shoot, hopefully they'll do it all this year. Like I said, I want to be proven wrong. I want to be wrong. We'll see. We'll just see. And finally, Julio Jones. Julio Jones is going to Tampa. He'll be alongside Tom Brady. Signed a one-year deal. Six million dollars. Mm -hmm. Already, there's a video of Tom Brady throwing a dime to Julio Jones. And Julio Jones is, is ecstatic about playing alongside Tom Brady. And Mike Evans seems to enjoy him. So I want to give my quick thoughts on that as well. Julio Jones is not really what he used to be. I think he is on the decline of his career and I don't think he'll be as effective as I think a lot of people are going to expect him to be. He continues to have injury issues and I'm assuming all those injuries and rehabbing and stuff like that is taking a toll on his body plus the punishment that his body already takes when he plays a game of football in general. Teams may try to go one-on-one -on -one with Julio whereas in the past that was basically a no-no. They may try to go one-on-one -on -one with, with Julio. And then on the other side, you have Mike Evans. Teams may try to actually double team him or play zone coverage on that side. Now, Mike Evans has injury problems too, but when both healthy, I think Mike Evans at this stage would be the best option. But then there's Kyle Rudolph, who they also signed. I wouldn't be surprised if Brady tries to create that Gronk and Brady kind of relationship with Kyle. Like, they develop that type of chemistry as the season goes on and during the offseason. Um, what do you do with Kyle? Like, Kyle's not... Kyle doesn't really strike me as the guy who will go over and snag it over the top and then run you over for yards after the catch once he has the ball in his possession like Gronk did. He is athletic. He kind of moves like a wide receiver. I think Gronk is a much bigger target than Kyle is. So certain teams may try and take chances of going one-on-one -on -one with him as well. I don't know. I don't know. It's I don't think Tampa's receiving core won't be as effective as they have been in the past so far because out of everybody, I would say my main focus would be Mike Evans and Kyle Rudolph. So if I can take those two out of the equation, then there's Russell Gaze and Chris Godwin and Julio Jones, who I kind of like my chances with. I would say those are like the lesser of the evils or the two evils. I don't think I'm saying that right, but whatever. Yeah, I think defenses, especially defenses that have top corners on their team, like a Los Angeles, like a Jalen Ramsey, you know, you could use someone like Jalen on a Mike Evans and then go one-on-one -on -one with Julio and then maybe double team Kyle and then try and play man-on-man -on -man against Tampa Bay's other receivers so I don't know I don't know we'll we'll see Tampa may not be as effective offensively now that I'm thinking about it and I'm talking about it right now this video is dragging on a bit too long just want to come on here and get my thoughts on Marcus Mariota Marlon Davidson and Julio Jones and the Bucks please like and subscribe hit the notification bell for when I drop a new video football season right around the corner I will, I will be ramping up videos like this so please be on the lookout and that is it I am out